Hi, I'm John, and I'm a level one chef. I'm Lorenzo, and I'm a level two chef. My name is Kelvin, and I've been a chef for 12 years. I make this dish about every other week, and you could turn your taco dinner into a fun little taco party. How often I make tacos, how many Tuesdays are in a month? <laughs> taco Tuesday's big in my house, and if you're not making fresh tortillas, you're not doing it right. Turn my oven on here, my little tabletop oven here. Now you can use this type of skillet. I'm using a cast iron skillet. It's a great opportunity to add a great crisp outer texture. And I actually like to make my tacos with ground turkey. The ground beef that I always use is a mixture of 80-20, which means 80 lean and 20 fat, because the fat makes it yummy. I use ribeye instead of ground beef because I think it's important that every bite of the taco, you're gonna taste the meat. We're gonna brown our ground turkey, and I don't use any oil or anything. It has enough fat in this, but this is a non-stick. I'll put a little bit Canola of oil. Canola oil. You're making sure that we're using an oil that's not gonna overpower the flavor of the steak. So we're gonna add a little bit of kosher salt, salt ground pepper. So this taco recipe might be not very traditional Mexican, I think. So this is something that growing up, my mom, who is Chinese, made. We actually didn't eat a lot of Chinese food growing up, but these tacos would definitely eat quite a bit. This is the part that's very familiar with people. This is what everybody does. You know, that's the beauty of cooking, is you can do whatever you want. You need to let it sit on the heat. Smush it down. When you're cooking a steak, you're gonna leave it alone, let it work its magic. You don't want it to just boil. And that's when it gets gray. So I'm just gonna wait for it to get um, a, a whiter color, and you'll know your ground turkey's done when there's no more pink left. Pretty easy metric. This is what we're looking for. You have that beautiful golden brown. This is our first layer of flavor. All right, let's flip this over, break it up to make it look like it's actually taco meat. The turkey created a little bit of juice, and I keep it in there. I think it's tasty. I don't know. <laughs> we're gonna drain this a little bit because we don't want all that fat in there. I know it's yummy. We're gonna start adding our next layer of flavor. I'm using Fresh rosemary, fresh thyme. We're gonna add the butter in stages, so in case the pan is too hot, it's not gonna burn your butter right away. Let's put a little bit of oil. I put red pepper flakes in everything. Onions, hello. I'm not entirely sure what's in taco seasoning mix, but I just trust what's on the label because I figure it makes tasty tacos. Cayenne pepper, chili powder. That's my cumin. Ooh. Cornstarch. We're gonna take the oil and the butter mix, and you're gonna pour it right over the steak. In case we miss any spots on the steak, we're gonna guarantee caramelization all over. Add the brown meat and the taco seasoning. I add in about a can of just simple red tomato sauce. So the water is gonna also combine with the cornstarch that we had in our taco seasoning. So now the taco sauce that we're creating will actually kind of be thick enough and kind of adhere to the meat. It's not gonna be lost dripping down your plate. This is an optional ingredient that I like to add on, just some red kidney beans. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. That being said, if you have issues with gas, skip the beans. When checking for doneless, I like to poke the steak. So now at this point, we're gonna remove the steak and let it rest. And voila, the meat is complete. While we're letting our meat rest, it's time to move on to the toppings. I like to make just a vegetable mixture that I'll put on top of my tacos. So this is gonna be my pico de gallo, folks, if you wanted to make guac with this. For toppings, we're using fresh guacamole and a pineapple pico de gallo. Everybody makes guacamole different. I like to use some of the same ingredients I have in my pico de gallo right into my guacamole, so we're gonna cut the same ingredients. I'm using vine-ripe tomatoes. You can use any tomatoes you want, as long as they're firm. firm. Plum tomatoes. I do like to take the seeds out. This is gonna prevent my guacamole and pico de gallo not to be so liquidy. I'm making pico, I'm not making salsa. And just a simple dice, nothing too crazy here. Not trying to impress anyone, really. Everything's diced. Everything's diced through the small little cubes. White onion or red onion? Diced white onion. I choose red onion. Color contrast, when we put that on top of the guacamole, it's gonna look beautiful. Cilantro. Cilantro. A lot of people ask me, am I supposed to use the stems? Of course, it's the same thing. It's as good as the leaves. Now, I don't enjoy the texture of the stem, so I'm just gonna remove the leaves. Don't know the proper way to cut a cucumber, but this is how I do it. Put it to quarters, and then just right down the middle. And sometimes pieces fly too. Garlic, we're gonna microplane it in. Mince it, so basically as tiny as possible, guys. You're gonna get that nice garlic flavor throughout, but you're not gonna get a piece of garlic that's gonna be overpowering and bitter when you taste it. Jalapeno. Oh my God. The seeds add a little bit more heat. I'm just taking it out. Some people just maybe can't take it. I like it. So you wanna make sure we cut this jalapeno as fine as possible, and once in a blue, you'll get a nice little kick. And then, hello, avocado. 
if it is, like if you press it in and it doesn't bounce back, it's over right. My weapon of choice is the potato masher. I'm just scoring it, you guys. So we're looking for a nice creamy texture. I'm gonna add some kosher salt. salt. Bring out all the flavor. Lime. You get out a lot more than this. Gonna use about a full lime. It keeps the avocado fresh. And now the most important part is to taste. And if it makes you dance, you're right on. Pineapple, game changer. Adding a little bit of that pineapple is gonna give you a real nice freshness to this dish. Main ingredient to this pico de gallo is pineapple, so we wanna make sure that it's pineapple heavy. I'm actually gonna wrap things up with the last couple toppings. Iceberg lettuce. I'm just gonna do a nice, simple dice here. Nothing too fancy. Now that my veggie mixture is complete, I'm just gonna give it a nice little mix. And there you have it. Beautiful veggie mix to put on top of my taco meat. Next is my cheddar cheese. Oh, I know it's easy to buy those packs that are already shredded, but they taste different. And this Mexican cheese blend, store-bought cheddar. So these are my taco shells, and they're store-bought. Takes some of, the, some of the workout. Taco shells and tortillas. Yes, I did say two different types. I like using both. We're gonna do some fresh tortilla. We're using masa, which is basically corn flour. Salt is very important because this is your only opportunity to season the tortilla. I put them in the oven or the toaster for just a quick couple of seconds, gets them extra crunchy. If you leave them in the top or toaster or oven for too long, they get brown and will ignite like a ball of fire. So watch them with your life. We're gonna add one cup of warm water. Consistency that you're looking for when making fresh tortilla, it's almost like Play-Doh consistency, if you can remember what that feels like. Here's our dough. Time to let it rest for about 10 minutes. I'm literally just, I'm just warming it through. I add a little bit of sour cream as my paste. That holds basically my hard shell. Once I start cooking the tortillas, we're gonna hold them in between this cloth and a plate. Once we start stacking them up, the steam is gonna cook the tortilla throughout. Wedged limes that I had cut, I am actually gonna use these to hold my Tacos up. That's cool. Come on now. <laughs> I always like that. People like when I do that at home. We're gonna roll them into little golf balls. Here we have a tortilla press. So we're gonna set this ball right in the middle. We're not gonna put too much pressure. We're just gonna let the tortilla press do its job. We're literally only gonna cook it for about 40 seconds on each side. We're gonna hide it right underneath. So the cloth is being used as a warmer right now. So while we stack up all the tortillas on top of it, it's gonna completely finish cooking the tortilla from the inside. Just got these puppies out of the oven and they are just the way that I like them. And now the best part, we're gonna assemble our tacos. So have our taco shells here. Um, as you remember, this was the ground turkey. So the best tortillas are the ones that are at the bottom. Grab our ribeye. I like to start with the cheese first. Then I go to the meat. Wow, that smells really good. Then we have some of our veggie mixture. We're gonna add our beautiful creamy guacamole right in the center. I go back to the cheese. <laughs> I just like cheese. Now I go to a little bit of the lettuce. Now. The pineapple de gallo. Lime juice more. Ba, 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 ba. Sour, sour cream. And some shredded Mexican blend cheese. A little bit some of cilantro. cilantro. Let's try to hit the plate. And then a little bit of Tabasco. There you have it. My homemade tacos. It looks really good, guys. You know, visually, the, the taco looks stunning. Moment of truth, time to dig in. Let's try out these tacos. Mm -hmm. If it makes you dance, we did good. That's exactly how I remember my tacos always tasting. John used ground turkey, Lorenzo used ground beef, and Calvin cooked and cubed ribeye steak. Kind of like to show off a little bit. These meats are muscles composed of protein, fat, and water. As meat cooks, the water holding capacity of the muscle proteins decreases and the fat melts. Protein molecules that are bound to water will uncoil and aggregate and push water out of the structure. This causes the meat to shrink in size, lose juiciness and tenderness, and become dry. John chose ground turkey, which is a lean cut of meat. Lean cuts have less fat and fewer flavor compounds than high fat cuts. I used to do ground beef, but I switched over to turkey when I became an adult. Lorenzo chose ground beef with 20% fat. It's gonna be delicious. By exposing ground beef to heat, the fat renders or melts and pools around the beef. This allows the meat to cook in its own fat, 
which helps to tenderize and flavor the meat. This is what I do at home, so. Kelvin pan-seared ribeye steak, which has fat marbled throughout the muscle. This cut of meat will remain more tender than John and Lorenzo's ground meat because there is less surface area for the intramuscular fat to liquefy. When you sear that fat, it's another layer of flavor. John added tomato sauce to help return moisture and used store-bought taco seasoning to add flavor. It has a bunch of stuff in there that I don't know what it is, but it's really tasty. Lorenzo mixed his own taco seasoning that was similar to John's store-bought blend. A little pepper, pretty easy. Lorenzo included starch, which will increase the viscosity of the meat mixture. So or else all the yummy goodness is just gonna go away. Kelvin basted his ribeye with butter and fresh herbs for a rich and earthy flavor. Layers of flavors are the most important thing when you're cooking. John chopped and mixed vegetables to top his taco. Tomato is sometimes tricky to cut, but we all persevere. Lorenzo made pico de gallo. It's everything in a guacamole, but it's not mashed. And Calvin used a combination of guacamole and pineapple pico de gallo. Game changer. The pineapple in Calvin's pico de gallo added a layer of sweetness that complemented the savory flavors in the taco. Mm, my pico is good. Pineapple contains an enzyme called bromelain. Bromelain helps with the process of hydrolysis, which is the breaking apart of protein molecules. This is the same process that can cause a tingling sensation on the surface of your tongue when you eat raw pineapple. If you want to enjoy pineapple pico de gallo without the tingling tongue sensation, apply heat to the pineapple to deactivate the bromelain before incorporating it. You know, you can actually even grill the pineapple and then you get a little bit of smokiness in that as well. John used store-bought hard shell corn tortillas. Which is fine. Lorenzo sandwiched together store-bought hard shell and soft corn tortillas. And Calvin crafted homemade corn tortillas. And if you're not making fresh tortillas, you're not doing it right. I don't know if that's actually true, but it works for me. <laughs> corn used in tortillas has been processed using nixtamalization, which is the traditional process that cooks corn in an alkaline or high pH solution. Nixtamalization improves the flavor of the corn and decreases the concentration of mycotoxins toxin, an unsafe fungus present in many plants. The alkalinity provided by nixtamalization also increases the nutritional value of the corn. The nixtamalized corn is commercially pressed and cooked to create the tortillas that John and Lorenzo used, Voila, tacos. or ground into masa flour like Kelvin used. It's gonna be perfect. Kelvin hydrated the masa flour, hand pressed the dough into rounds to form tortillas, and toasted them in a skillet. Then he stacked and wrapped the tortillas in a kitchen towel, steaming them to make them soft and pliable. Our chefs layered their ingredients strategically to ensure each ingredient was present in a single bite of their taco. That's what I'm trying to do. John spooned his meat mixture into the bottom of the taco shell. Meat sauce. He topped the meat with chopped veggies, sour cream, and finished with a sprinkle of shredded cheese. Both store bought, both pretty available. The acidity and the sour cream will balance out the flavor of the alkaline corn tortilla. Oh, but it's exactly how they're supposed to taste when I make them. Lorenzo warmed his soft corn tortilla. He slathered on sour cream and nestled the hard taco shell into the sour cream covered soft taco shell to double up on tortilla textures. Pre-prepared taco shells. He then sprinkled on cheese, added the beef mixture, and topped it with shredded lettuce. Iceberg lettuce is actually the the number one lettuce for tacos. Pico de gallo, cilantro, and hot sauce. <laughs> Lorenzo's layered tortillas contained the ingredients in the taco and kept them from spilling onto the plate. Nothing fell. Not a darn thing fell. <laughs> Calvin served his taco open face style. This is more like an appetizer style. He spooned the steak over the steamy tortillas. Then he topped the steak with homemade guacamole, pineapple pico de gallo, and cilantro. The guacamole that Kelvin used added a creamy layer to the taco. Some small pieces of avocado, which I like to see, is gonna add another layer of texture. This is a good alternative to the sour cream that John and Lorenzo used because the guacamole will provide an interesting textural contrast to the other components in the taco while creating an enrobing mouthfeel. To me, texture is very important. Tacos are an easy meal to make at home. I would say it's a job well done, if I do say so myself. You can go simple like John, or step up your game like Lorenzo or Kelvin. Hello. Spice up your next Taco Tuesday with the ingredients that are right for you.